Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. What I thought I'd like to do today is some little pockets, but they're the little clothes pockets. And it's so nice and easy. So we're gonna make these from scratch. And I know you can buy them pre-done, but there's only so many times we wanna keep going out and buying them. And this is such an easy way to actually make them from scratch. They're so easy to do. So I've got three already done. We're gonna make another one today and then I'm gonna show you something extra with this one. So they're just a sweet little pocket that you can pop your journaling tags in. They then have a little string clasp to do up like so so that they'll tuck into your journals, into your little tuck spots, into full pockets, or on their own. This one I've got so that you can actually just attach it to your journal. Um, there we go. Let's pull out my journal that I'm working on. Uh, let's have a look. All right, here's one I'm playing with at the moment. So I would decorate this page and for this one, where I've got nothing on the back, he would probably be attached completely to my page. And then he can undo and pull him out. This one has actually been done on a handmade embossed paper. Um, you can find lots of different handmade papers. You can make your own, of course. Um, I'm a bit lazy. So I've got lots and lots of little handmade papers that I tend to find around the trap and keep hold of and hoard. Don't hoard them, keep using them because they are just so beautiful. So this one, yes, you could attach it to your page, but he would look lovely in a little tuck spot like so. What I've also got, just close you, pop you back in there, out of the way. Also done a Christmas one, because let's face it, it's Christmas time. Whether we're ready for it this year or not, it's just one of those things. And I so wasn't ready for Christmas and it's starting to get to me. So I've had to start playing with Christmas. I can't help myself. So the other one we make today will be a Christmas one. But this one has been done front and back. And I'll explain with this one a different way to use him shortly. So they're nice, they're quick, they're easy to make. Great way to use up smaller parts of your papers that you've got sitting around in boxes or on your table. Excuse me, I've got dreadful hay fever today. So what we're going to do is I've drawn up a template. I'm hoping you can see that with all your measurements on it. Now I've done it in centimetres. Sorry for all you girls that work in inches. Um, I tend to work, if I'm doing scrapbooking, if I'm doing larger things, um, and most of my full journals, I tend to do in inches. When I'm doing card making, I tend to work in centimetres. It's just me. Um, so this has been done in centimetres. I will give you approximates for inches as well. But once you've made one, you can change the size to these so easily. So I've just got a one centimetre allowance down here. So you're looking around about half an inch, a bit under half an inch. You're 10 centimetres high or around four inches. This bit is two centimetres, round about three quarters of an inch. Seven and a half centimetres or about three inches. And the same over here. So I'll just leave that sitting there for a little moment. If you like, you can just take a screenshot of it while you're watching your video, if you're doing it on your phones. And then you've got your template for all times. So what we've got, here he is already. Straight lines are cutting lines. These are the bits that you'll cut out. Anything with a dashed line is where you'll use your bone folder and you will score these lines. Okay, so here's one. Here's one I prepared earlier. This is all it is. 
Okay, if you look at that, it is just that. So hopefully we've got all that now. I'll set him to the side. I've scored my dashed lines, which are these ones, so that when he folds, all these will fold down. Make sense? That's all it is. It is so easy with this thing. So that you don't get too much thickness in this corner, we're just going to trim off this corner as well, just to give him a nice mitre. Go as close as you can to that edge, the two folded edges, but don't go right in. I'm going to trim off a little bit of this one as well, so that we've got a nice mitered section in there. And once again up here, so that we don't have that full bulk at the top. So all we've done is trimmed these off. So that when this folds, and this folds, and that folds over, it leaves them fairly thin, and you don't have all that bulk sitting there. Because, let's face it, our journals are so bulky anyway. If we can get away with a little bit less weight and thickness in them, we're doing better. I've done this just in a lightweight card stock. Now, this one, the Christmas one that I did, what I actually did with him, if I undo him, ah, I actually did with double-sided scrapbook paper so that I had the different design on the inside. So again, it was just a way of using up some paper that I had floating around. With this, I like to curve my tops. So with your corner rounder in here. Now, I'll give you a hint. You're not going to get this in. So let's find just a piece of scrap. It's actually some scrap left over from that, which was a really lightweight cardstock. If I just round my corner there, I know it's the same round as that one. And if I then sit it just here to match in, you can either draw this line and trim around or just follow this one right now. And then you've got your two curved sections of your flap. Now, you can leave this tuck you in as a straight end. What I like to do with mine is give them that little tuck spot. You can just put a half circle in there or you can do this which mimics your flap but hides it all with that flap. The easiest way to do that, get a piece of cardstock that's going to be about the size that you want that flap to be. Pencil. So I want a little bit either side. Sorry girls, I never meant measure. I just tend to go by eye. And we'll trim him off just there. So straight down. Put you to the side. That's noisy, that trimmer. So that what I've got is that size. Trim and cut your two edges so that now you've got this same as up here, but he's smaller. Sit him on using your grid so that he's all nice and straight. Slide him down so that you know where you're going, keeping this straight. I don't want him that full two centimetres, otherwise I won't won't cover it all with my flap. So you can see that my flap is two centimetres. So if I've got this one, he's round about a centimetre, uh, one, two, three eighths of an inch. I know he's nice and straight. Well, I'm hoping he's nice and straight. And then I can just draw around. Always make sure your pencil's sharp, that way you'll get a thinner line. As you can see, my pencil's not sharp. Big fat line. Right, so if we then have our template that's sitting there, 
I have quite a few of these sitting around. Um, I do, I do, I do, I do. I don't know where I put them. <laughs> See, I do, but now it looks like I'm lying. Oh, look. See, I have quite a few of these sitting around in different sizes because they're handy for things like this. And it doesn't take much to make them again when I lose them in amongst all my mess. Okay. So carefully going around because it's a small curve. Keep your scissors straight and move your paper. And now what you've got is a finger tuck that's going to be hidden with your flap. Always remember to rub out your pencil lines. Just so. Now what you've got is that. Little bit of ink because this is me and you know me by now. I can't not ink anything. I'm just going to go on my edges. I always use a brown. Um, it'll just go with everything I find. I don't have to worry about changing inks or anything else. I'm just using a mid-brown brush corduroy in my distress inks which are my favorite inks if I'm inking anything I use my distress inks if I'm stamping to get a crisp clear image I use my archival inks the Ranger archival inks they won't bleed they stay nice and fresh and crisp so going across all my fold lines front and back because at this stage, I don't know whether I want to adhere it into my journal or have it as a tuck spot. So it's wiser to ink both sides while you're inking as well. So that's all done. That's all done. That's all done. Just got the top to do. And our little pocket is done. The last thing I do with my pocket is stick it together. So I'm actually going to decorate it now before it's all stuck together. Move that, bear with me, coffee. For some strange reason when I have really bad hay fever and my sinuses start to play up, coffee is the best thing for me. So I'm, I'm on my second, I'm doing well. I've taken my son to work, I've done the groceries and I'm on another, I had to get a big takeaway cappuccino on the way home. Mm. Sorry, girls. Okay. So, here's our, our little pocket. And I'm only going to decorate the front of this one, including this bit. So, again, I've just pulled out some old paper pads and sheets of paper that I've got floating around. Um, and I've got that, and I've got my brads, and I've got everything. So, hopefully, I'm organised enough. So, let's have a look. I just want... Again, I just tend to use pencil marks. Never measure. I'll go by eye. Because each time you do these, if you change your template, you'll end up with a different size. Anyway. Uh, I've already got something cut in there. We'll see. We might just leave him there for now and we'll have a look. Um, this is an old Meg's garden. I've got so many old paper pads that I really need using and I want some wording. Not that big. Let's have a look. I know there's some sheets in here. You can see I haven't used much of it and I reckon I've had it for 10 years. I have too many papers. No, you can never have too many papers, can you? This is true. Never have too many papers. Right, let's have a look. There it is. What I want is this. So, I just want this. That's a nice thin paper, this one. Um, just out of the paper pads. I find a lot of the paper pads are single-sided. So they're nice and thin and will work really well without adding too much bulk. So we're just going to tear around him. And then I might just further tear him down. 
And I'll go around all that as well. Don't want to lose my actual writing. Yeah, okay. Let's have a look at that up in there, maybe. Just so that I don't lose too much of my nice little gold spot. Right. I've got... Got some gold there. We might just trim a, trim a bit of him as well. Let's have a look at that. In case, what I might do do like that. Now, when you see these, you'll see we need our closures. So you can see about how far down. So I don't want to lose what it is I want to see. My closure is going to be around here somewhere. So I don't want to touch this spot up here. Let's have a look. If I go there so that my red's showing, and yes, I can still see that. So I'm going to take a little bit more of that one out. And all it is, is a little bit taken from the upside down part of my circle punch. Yep. So now that's just matched in with that to save me having to trim more off because it's obviously been a project that I've been working on before and then popped him back aside. So this one I'm going to take all the way over to there. This one I'm going to sit in between the two so that I see all of those. I'll just ink very quickly around all those at the moment. So I hope your weekend is treating you well. Whether we like it or not, Christmas is nearly here. It's time to start thinking of Christmas, getting our Christmas bits and pieces. It's been a shocking year this year. And I just... Christmas is my favourite time of the year, normally every other year, and I'm so keen for Christmas to start. We have a deal in our house, our children's birthdays at the end of September, and I'm not allowed to talk about Christmas until after their birthdays. Their birthdays are well and truly gone, and I'm still really not into Christmas. I'm putting it down to this year. Technically, Christmas decorations are meant to go up, what, three weeks away, four weeks away? Towards the end of November, I normally do them. And I just can't quite imagine it this year. So maybe if I start working on all of my Christmas papers, it'll start to get me in the mood. I'm hoping, anyway. Right, I want a little sand. I've got a little pack of... Oh, pack, it's a sheet again, out of a paper pad. Um, and I'm thinking I want something just up in there so oh I like him let's have a look we'll just caref carefully we'll just quickly trim him out and then see whether he will work oh mind you no I don't like it oh he's got a funny mouth so we'll go with this one which is where we were in the first place now, do I want to cut around him or do I want to leave him square? Let's have a look. We'll just sit this down, straighten them up. You'll notice I'm not sticking anything down at the moment because all of this will be stuck together. Then we'll stick it onto this. Mm. Just going to very quickly fussy cut around him. And then I might sit him on a different colour, maybe, to give him that backing so that he's not the brown. 
Mm, I actually quite like him without being edged. So we'll just ink him. Two reasons. You're not going to really see the brown on the picture, but what it does, see how where I've cut around him, he's got this white core colour. So the brown ink will just get rid of that core colour so that you don't have the white showing. I don't need to do down the bottom because he's going to be tucked in here. Drop you down a little bit. I'll sit you there. All right. Let's have a look and we'll stick some of this down. All right. Let's got a piece of paper. Make some room again. Go back from there back. The rest will be stuck down properly when I stick it actually onto my pocket. So I'll line him up to where I want him to go. Something's not quite straight there, but that's all right. I wanted him to sit close to the edge. Beautiful. This one's going to sit in here. Ah, I wanted him tucked under that, didn't I? Let's have a look. <laughs> Why is it that glue only ever sticks really quickly when you don't want it to stick really quickly? Murphy's Law? Must be. Okay. So, he's stuck down. Tuck him in up there so he doesn't come off the page. Like so. There's my cloth. I'm getting very sticky fingers here. All right, so this guy can now be stuck onto there like so. This is such a wonderful, again, they're a good thing to have sitting in, oh, I have a box on my desk of just different ephemera pieces that I've made and pockets and tags and bits and pieces so that when I'm, I'm in the mood and I'm ready to actually do a journaling page, I got up just a little bit, um, they're all sitting there and I can achieve a lot in a short amount of time and it makes you feel really good that you've come out and achieved something. The fact that all your ephemera pieces were already done has nothing to do with it. It's just a matter of being able to sit down and create a page without stressing over, oh, I need this, I need that, and having to pull everything out because they're all sitting there. Right, so this is where this is all going to sit. My front pocket is going to come down here like that. My front pocket, here we go, He's going to cut earlier. I want that on there. So again, I need to round my corners so that that matches in with that one. Sit you straight. One and two. Lots and lots of different corner rounders out there. But they're probably one of the best tools that you will ever get yourself. You can get them in lots of different sizes, big ones, small ones, etc. But they would have to be the best tool. If you're ever looking to get a tool, a punch, something like that to do for your journals or anything that you're doing, I would say a corner punch and a circle of some sort. They will give you your finger holes for when you're pulling things out. They can give you... This little section just for a little bit of difference and it'll also make our closures shortly so sit you there and you there this one will fit now in here oh he's kind of crooked but he's kind of okay right so what we want to do i'm just it's not the same paper as that, but it's a cream. But I'm going to change it slightly. What I want to do is make two circles. But I don't want it that full cream. So I'm going to use, going to use a stamp. I had to do a stamp in here somewhere. So I've just got a little Christmas wording stamp. Now this is a dark room door set. Um, one of my favourites. And it's just the definition of Christmas. 
you won't see that much of it, but it gives your circle just a slight bit of difference. So, um, and it look, it is so old. Um, 2010, had it forever. They don't actually come in the tins like this anymore. They come in a clear um, DVD case. So this is Noel is the set. DDRS060. But love her stamps. Use quite a bit of her stamps. Now, I'm going to stamp this one. Grab block. And see, I've used it lots. It's losing its phone at the back. And I think I want a red. Again, my archival link, because it'll give me a good, solid, crisp image. Taking my ink pad down to my stamp. Doesn't matter if it's overly straight, because I'm just going to punch some circles out of it. Doesn't even matter if it's up the right way. I didn't actually look to see what way it's up. There we go. Right, so what I wanna do with this, and that's dry already. The archival link dries really, really quick. Is, I want one and two. So that I've got now two little closures with some Christmas words. I don't know if you can see that. I'll hold it still. Again, because I've inked everything else in brown in my little pocket, I'll ink around this one in the brown as well. Promise, girls, I'm not going to go too long today. I'm hoping. I've been, what, half an hour now? I have a clock in here now just to stop me rambling. Mm, don't think it's going to work. But I'm trying. I'm not known for my keeping quiet. Right. Very quick sip of my coffee again. Mm. Thank you. Right, so here's my little pocket. I want, um, this is just a really thick foam mat that I use for when I'm punching brads. We're actually going to be popping brads on this. You can do these with eyelets as well and still go around your circles. I think most people will have little brads, okay, which are just your little split pins. I find that they're easy. Most people tend to have them sitting around, whereas with eyelets, you need a setting tool and all the rest. So this way you can get away with it with very little extra bits and pieces. So he's gonna go in the center. And I'm not going to punch through this. I'm just working out where I'm going. This little guy's going to sit in here. He's round about centre. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I scare myself sometimes. Right. Taking him off there. Just an awl or a pricking tool or a big darning needle. Um, your big darning needles will work just as well. Just pop a hole into the centre, stir it a bit, which makes your hole a little bit bigger. And then pop your bread or your split pin through. Little gold ones would look really nice on this one, but I don't know where my gold ones are at the moment. So we're just gonna go chrome. Okay, so here's this one. This is why we haven't stuck this down until now. So now my bread is in and it'll hide that bread completely. So from the inside, you won't be grabbing at that bread when you're trying to tuck things in. So this one's gonna go over here. This will sit on there. And again, same thing with this one. We're gonna actually pop it onto this so that we can work out where we actually need him so that he lines up. Just gonna sit him in there. That looks about right. Lift these guys up, sit him down. Make sure he's lined up. Make my hole go in. And ooh, another bread. 
like so. Splitting them over. If you find that they're still sitting out a little bit, I'll move that. Just pop him on your bench on your table so that he's down that way and give him a little bit of a push. It just flattens so you can see how he's all flattened down now. So, all right, there's one that I've just pushed. I'm hoping you can see that. This one I haven't yet pushed, so he's still out a little bit. Sit him down, give him a push, and it flattens it out beautifully. Both of those can now be stuck on. So, paper. And with this one, I'm just going to use my white glue. And I'll just follow him around, hoping he's... Yep, there he is. All the way out to my edges. And up. Turn him around. I love this little bottle, but I keep getting this stuck wherever I'm going. And down and just for good measure a little bit in the centre doesn't need to be a great deal depending on your glue if your glue is not a glue that sticks wonderfully well pop in a bit more mine's just it's a really good glue um but so I just need some little dots like that sticking this guy down what I'll do to stick him down is I'll work on this corner because I had him even. And then I don't have to worry about the whole thing. If I'm trying to put the whole thing down, I find I get the shakes. So this way I've just got to worry about one corner and then the rest should be right. Okay. Give him a push. So there's our front. We're going to do the same with this one. Back to my glue. Going all the way around. Give him a little bit in the center, just to make sure he's gonna stick down. Move that over. Open him out, might be a bit easier. Yeah, there, he's a bit flatter now like using my glue for these because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room if I've popped him in. Um, I've always been a double-sided tape girl, but with the glue for these, it just gives me a little bit of wiggle room so that hopefully I get him just a little bit straighter. All right, there's our pocket. So now we just need to glue these guys. Back with my grab. Going down, I mainly want it close to that edge, but I'll just go up so that none of that's floating on the inside. Back through this way, close to my edge, not too thick so that it doesn't ooze out everywhere. Lovely. And now we're going to stick this guy down. The easiest way to do this fold that bit and start here and as I'm pushing down now I can fold if I turn that round you'll see now I can fold this bit like so cloth because I've now got glue all over my fingers give him a good push and he's all stuck down hopefully you'll need to give him a little bit of time to dry while he's drying what we'll do to close him it's just look it's just crochet cotton uh, my Christmas one that I did my other Christmas one mm -hmm. that one and that one there is a little bit of cross stitch cotton just two threads of and then I've popped some little beads on him I just need to close him again sit you back there Hang you down. Right, so same thing with this one. I always start with the tail hanging out there. Now, when you first do it, you will need to lift these up. 
and down. There we go. That's all there is. Trim him off. You can pop beads on them. You can leave them as just their tails. Sit him under like that. I want to actually do a journal tag for inside this one. So I'm just going to undo him again. And leave that bit on there like that. Lifting him up because in this stamp set, which is this one, love, 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 love this. And it actually fits beautifully as a full journal card. So I just need a little bit of cream because I'm going to match him up to, oh, well, actually, no, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back to that paper pad and some of these have got, no, maybe not, they're too, oh, that will work because you can still journal on that middle piece, can't you? Because it's light enough to journal on. So we're looking at this section in here. So if I stamp the other side in the middle there, I know it's a waste, not quite a waste, because I've got lots of others that I can use around here. So I need my bigger foam this time for stamping. Sit you down so that you're straight. Um, the block I had before should fit this one. Yep. Oh, I like to turn mine sideways so that my stamp's always sideways on. And if I just do that, maybe I'll do that in the red as well. Mm. No, might just do it in sepia. Because I really can't come at the red leaves. So once again, taking my ink pad to my stamp, give him a good ink. And I want to go somewhere in the middle of this. Just about there, because that's where that lighter colour for journaling was going to be. Give him a good push. I didn't check this stamp prior. Usually, if I haven't used a stamp for a little while, I will always practice stamp. And as these are Christmas ones, I haven't used them since last Christmas. No, he's come out beautiful. Ah, oh, look at that. Right. So here's my journaling one. Now, if I just trim around him, let's have a look. If I give him a little bit of a border first... So he's only done on a lightweight paper pad. So he's a little bit thicker than normal 80 GSM copy paper, but not by much. So again, it's not putting much bulk into our pocket for in our journals. And one more. Now he is awfully white for the rest of my cream pocket. And look at that. So that means that it's it's pretty, but it's still light enough to be able to journal on. So I'll ink him with my brown as well. But his cream on that side, and he's still white white on the other side because the other side was the backing of the paper. So for me, see he's way too white. I'm gonna grab some antique linen because it's always sitting on my desk side and I'm just going to lightly go over it. I don't know if you girls can see that. I'll come back over here. How's that? And I'm just going to lightly go over it with my blending sponge just to take that starkness out which brings it back into the colours of the pocket that I've done so that it actually matches with my pocket. Shouldn't take too long. Twiddle your thumbs. I know inking takes a little bit of time. Um, for me, I tend to do inking with everything. 
hope I'm not boring you too much while you're watching this. There we go. I will need to wipe that before I put that all over my cream coloured ones. So now I've got a journaling tag, which still goes with the greys that are in there. Pop you in there. He sits in beautifully. But I want him straight. That's just my OCD. And in. Hold that one away. And round. Like so. How easy are they? They are just so easy to do. And they can go for any theme whatsoever. Now, as I said with this one, um, did him up the other night, a couple of nights ago, ready for this, started on these, played around, made up the template, etc. Decided to jump into Christmas and then sat there last night and thought, do you know what he'd be really good as, as well as a journal? We all tend to, we're into journals, we're into paper crafts, we like to do that. A lot of us make our own cards, we give gifts to friends. This makes a perfect gift card holder as well, if you're giving it to someone. So I just grabbed the rest of this paper pad, made up a very quick Christmas card. It's just got a little bit of glossy accents on this frame. Again, a Santa. Now, may I tear everything? I've stamped a Merry Christmas on this. Found a lovely little um, arrow that was in one of these paper pads. But inside, I've popped a pocket so that you can give this one now with a little gift card inside. So what a wonderful little Christmas present that would make. And it covers two birds with one stone. So you've got your Christmas card, they open it up, and inside their little pocket, they'll have a little Christmas, a little gift card for their goodies. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed making these this week. They've, I could just keep going with them forever. Um, and I know I'm gonna have lots and lots of these sitting in my box of ephemera ready to go. I could just, every time I came across a different paper, I went, oh, I'll do a bright one. Oh, I'll do a flower one. Oh, and it just kept going because, and they're just little bits. So again, you could collage a whole front. You can use your book pages. I promised myself I wasn't going to use any book pages this week because I've just been using so many book pages, but then I kind of made some of my own. This one's actually got a stamp. This was just um, a lighter colour in this paper further over in the corner that I just punched out the two circles and then used a very small script stamp again in, a co in the coffee archival link and stamped on there just to give them a little bit of a difference again. Your stamps work so well because you can change the look of your papers. You can add little bits. Always think of where you can add a little bit of a stamp. That way it's always going to be unique. So I really hope you've enjoyed these today, girls. Um, I've had so much fun making them. If you did like them, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.